Hey guys, welcome back to the Yankees franchise here at MLB 23, the show, episode 15. As uh, you can see, our record of 69 and 41 is good enough for first place now. We finally overtook the Rays uh, by just a single game. So we're one game up, played one more game than them. Um, so uh, two more games than them, excuse me. Uh, so we're one game up on the Rays in the division. Hopefully we can uh, finish off this division title or the season with a division title. As we're going into the month of uh, August in this episode, the trade deadline happened. And uh, just to recap, uh, in the wild card as well, the Rays are way ahead of the Red Sox and the Guardians. And uh, the Astros are half game outside looking in. Uh, so either way, if we don't win the division, we have a solid lead in the wild card. Just uh, throwing that out there. But yeah, in the last episode, uh, we and as you can see, the White Sox are in last place. That'll come into significance uh, in a sec. Because in that last episode, uh, I showed at the end there, if you watched, uh, Tyler O'Neill actually got hurt for two to three months, which is not good, not good. He fractured his arm. Uh, so what we did uh, to counter that is we traded for Gavin Sheets. As you saw, the White Sox were one of the worst teams in baseball, the worst team in the American League. And Gavin Sheets wasn't playing much. And, uh, you know, I'm obsessed with lefties with pop because uh, we play at Yankee Stadium. So I think that's what the Yankees should be obsessed with in real life. But they're not for whatever reason. Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, gonna trade for Gavin Sheets uh, on the Chicago White Sox. He was not playing much. The White Sox have a ton of outfielders. He's not even the best fielder, to be honest. Uh, but my thought process was to plug him in right field against righties. And Judge can just slide over to center for now for the second half of the season. Uh, I mean, for the last two months of the season and the playoffs. Uh, it's really not too much of an ask to, for our captain and for our you know, biggest signing ever, $40 million a year. So I think he could play center. Uh, what we sent back to Chicago was uh, Luis Hill, a uh, starting pitcher, 25, still with some promise. He was a much-touted prospect in the beginning. And... With injuries and him not performing as well as uh, the Yankees would have hoped, his trade value went down. But we're going to swap him for Gavin Sheets. He's going to fit right in against righties, batting seventh behind Condelario. Balances out the lineup a little bit more, too, although I, I did like Tyler O'Neill a lot. He was starting to heat up as well. I liked him a lot in that leadoff spot. But uh, Gavin Sheets will just have to bat seventh. Uh, Oswald Peraza moves up to the leadoff spot. Even though he's not having a great year, just don't really have any leadoff hitters on this team. As you can see, Max Kepler, who we thought maybe would slide in in that platoon role, has just been struggling, batting below 200, and he's had plenty of at-bats, only one home run and 176 at-bats. Not good enough. That's why we went out and made that trade. And funny enough, uh, our first game of this episode is going to be against the Chicago White Sox. As Domingo Herman's going to take them out. 4.7 ERAs. ERA went way up. It was uh, pretty solid to start the season, and now it's just gone climbing and climbing. I know he's our fifth starter, but 4.7 is not great. Jimmy Lambert on the hill for the White Sox. Much better ERA uh, for him. In the first show, hey, oh, goes deep again. How many times has he gone deep for us uh, on video? Let, not even let alone this season in the sim, but just uh, while during the gameplay. A guy's a cheat code in this game, just hitting bombs. Uh, that is number 42 of the season. Uh, like I said, we're in August at this point. So number 42 on the season. He's still got basically two months left. Got the whole month of September and like a day or two in October. I think one day. But uh, in the third, it's Shohei again. Uh, still one nothing, And he's going to go deep again. No doubt. Absolute bomb. Where's that going to land? Oh my goodness. Into the second and a half deck. That sweet level in the right field. Uh, he's making it his home. He's hitting a lot of bombs out there that way. Number 43 of the season now, 2 nothing Yanks. As uh, Let's see exactly. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I love that pitch trail thing. It really uh, it really is uh, kind of fun to watch. Uh, in the fifth, it's Austin Wells. Uh, he made uh, his debut earlier this season, having a good year. Uh, he's going to rip one down the right field line. It's going to be a base hit. Run's going to score. RBI base hit for Austin Wells. 3 nothing Yanks here in the fifth. Uh, we'll move on a little bit to the sixth, uh, just to show Domingo Herman's 3-2 now at this point. And it's Reese Hoskins who went over to the Chicago White Sox in free agency. And Aaron Judge goes back at the track. He leaps, but it's out of his leap. It's out of his grasp. And it's into the White Sox bullpen. This game is tied just like that. We're in cruise control. Domingo Herman was pitching good. And then all of a sudden, the game's tied. That's the theme with him. In the ninth, Gavin sheets up against his old team. Chance to walk it off. He's just going to hit a base hit up the middle. Uh, so we have first and second, two out, 
to try to win this game in the ninth. Next batter is going to be Anthony Volpe. 2-2 count, and he's going to rip one down the left field line. Going back to the left fielder, he's at the track, and he makes the catch right in front of the wall. Thought maybe we had a walk-off home run from Volpe there. In the 10th, uh, it's Okert in to try to hold the White Sox, and he does just that. Big strikeout for Yo Mankata. Holds the ghost runner at third, no run scores. In the 10th, we get our guy over to third. One out, 3-2 count for Oswald Peraza. And he is going to dunk one in the center. It's very shallow, but it is going to fall. Good read by the third, uh, the runner on third. To see that was going to fall in, that was Volpe on third. Good read by him. He's a very good base runner. And the run scores, and we win. Walk off, beat the White Sox. 4-3 in 10 innings. We'll jump ahead a little bit. We'll see we're 77-44 and 44 now. Uh, records playing pretty well uh, going against the San Diego Padres. Joe Musgrove versus Carlos Rodon. Rodon, 4.33. Uh, you know, it's it's not what we would want from him, but considering where he started this year, we'll take it. We're going to go ahead to the fourth. It's 1-1, actually. Uh, but Anthony Rizzo is going to stay hot. Rips this one down the right field line, and it is gone. Tatis runs out of room. Home run for Anthony Rizzo, our best hitter this year in terms of uh, average, and he's hitting for so much power. i just say our best hitter overall, 33rd of the season. We know Shohei has way more, but uh, Rizzo's batting average has just been so impressive at his age. Here's Gavin Sheets. Absolutely smokes one to dead center, and that ball is gone. A home run. I believe that's his first home run as a Yankee. I don't think he got one in the sim yet. So Gavin Sheets, dead center missile. And that's his sixth of the year. I'm pretty sure he came over with five. So, yeah, I think that's his first as a Yankee. Uh, in the fourth, though, Rodon's in a little bit of trouble. He gets Cronenworth to strike out, though. He'll get out of that jam. Still 3-1 Yanks. Uh, in the sixth, it's Gavin Sheets again. Still 3-1 run runner on first. He rips one deep down the right field line. Is it going to stay fair? Or fouls are going to get out. Tatis is under it. He leaps, but he can't make the play. It hits that uh, fair line. It looks like a pole, but it's uh, in play, though, underneath the wall. And that uh, hits that and ricochets away. It's a triple for Gavin Sheets. Uh, that'll probably be his only one of the year. Next uh, batter, Anthony Volpe. Up the middle, base hit. RBI, 5-1 and New York Yankees. So we're going to go all the way to the ninth here. Tommy Canley in to finish the job. And he's actually going to give up a run as uh, Drake Cronenworth rips one in the gap. Judge out there playing center. I still hate how he has a silver badge because he's not a silver fielder. He's way better than that. But whatever, it's in the gap, 6-2, um, and he'll get the next batter strikeout swing. So, Canley finishes the job, 6-2 win, another win this episode. Beautiful way to start. Two wins from two game plays here as we'll move on later in the month as we're 81-47 and 47 now. So, we're still playing pretty solid. Worse than Arizona Diamondbacks who are struggling. Nestor Cortez, 3.02 ERA, our best pitcher in terms of ERA yet again. Last year, he led the league. This year, he's leads our team so that counts for something tyon walker went back to arizona in this save uh four three three ra not bad in the first shohei otani 260 average so he's got the average uh much better and that one is gone again he loves hitting in yankee stadium man that one is blasted out there that goes to the bleachers in right field and long long gone for shohei otani he's feeling himself he loves freaking hitting at this ballpark. 44 home runs on the season for him. 416-foot bomb as the Yankees take an early lead as uh, Candelario up still. Still the first, by the way. Runner on first, two outs. And uh, Jamer Candelario rips one deep into right field. That wasn't sure if that had the distance or not, but that is going to go past the uh, right fielder out of his leap. And it's a porch job home run for Jamer Candelario. 3 nothing Yanks here in this first. That's his 26th of the season. So he's having a good year. We're jumping ahead all the way to the fourth uh, in the quick sim. We actually went off 8 nothing at this point. But the Diamondbacks are going to start crawling their way into it. Uh, a couple RBIs here from uh, McCarthy. He rips a double in the gap. Two run scores. Actually turned into a triple. 8-2. Uh, to two. Next batter is Kyle Lewis. He's going to dunk one in the right. Maybe deep enough to get the run home with that 96 speed. And Max Kepler's throw is way offline. So it's 8-3 to three at this point. In the fifth, uh, Diamondbacks still chipping away a little bit. It's another base hit. That's Owen Miller. He joined the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's an RBI base hit. It's 8-4. Uh, but the Diamondbacks, uh, you know, chipped away a little bit. But it would be too little too late uh, for Arizona at this point. Next batter is uh, Will Myers, and uh, he strikes out swing. So Nestor gets out 
uh, looking, excuse me. He gets out of that jam. We're jumping ahead all the way to the ninth because uh, really wasn't much to show. It was nine four the final as we won all three games in this episode. A uh, good way to finish off the month of August. Yeah, August. Uh, so we win all three. We play, and we actually had a very good record. As I'll show you guys where we are in the calendar. We're at the end of August, so by the time we play in the next episode, I'll sim these games ahead. Still in the lead in the division, two and a half games up only, but uh, feeling good. We've had a good month. Uh, seven and three in our last ten. You know we're playing well. Eighty-two and forty-seven. Very very solid record. We'll definitely and we should cruise in to the playoffs, no problem. So. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue uh, at all uh, with us. So feeling good. As long as we don't have any kind of uh, terrible month in September, we should be okay. In terms of playoffs, I think we'll be definitely okay. For the division, it's going to be tough. It's going to come down to the wire for sure, I would imagine. And the last series of the uh, of the year is against the Rays. So that might uh, be very, very interesting. I'll show you guys the uh, league leaders right now. Uh, or I'll go over the, our lineup. Yeah, let's go through the league leaders. <laughs> uh, Anthony Rizzo is still leading the league in average. Two points up from Alex Verdugo. And then uh, Jordan Alvarez is about 20 behind. 21 behind. So it's a two-man race, really, between Verdugo and Rizzo for the batting title. Rizzo's been hot all year. So is Verdugo. They've been neck and neck all season. So hopefully Rizzo can uh, edge him out and lead the league in batting average when this is all said and done. Be crazy for him to win a batting title. Especially without bad he's doing in real life. It's just unfathomable. Uh, sure, Atani leads the league in home runs. Behind him is uh, Aaron Judge at 36. So we're doing good offensively in terms of home runs. Um, we'll also go a little bit more down. But you see Anthony Rizzo has 34 as well. And uh, Candelario has 27. So uh, we have a lot of guys hitting some good power numbers this season. Which is the Yankees DNA. It's exactly what we want. So... Uh, this can't complain. I mean, you really can't. We have a lot of a lot of good uh, home run hitters. And look at the lefties: Candelario, Rizzo, Shohei Otani. Lefties with pop, man. I'm telling you, that's what I want, and it's working out so far. Uh, Shohei Otani leads the league in RBIs as well. He's got 110, only one over 100 in the American League. So he's having himself a great year offensively as well. That batting average uh, was in. I think it was 260 last time I saw it, but I don't know what it's at currently right now. But it's it's decent. It's very respectable. Uh, Aaron Judge leads the league in runs. Stolen bases. Volpe is actually in second place. Good year. 30 stolen base season for Anthony Volpe already. Four off of Cedric Mullins, who leads the league. So what a great year for Anthony Volpe. Getting on base, stealing bases, hitting home runs, getting that overall up to an 82 overall. Uh, we like that. That's for sure. As we'll continue for him to keep growing and this team to keep growing. Yeah, in the next episode, we'll finish off the regular season. Hopefully, we win this division title and make a run at the postseason. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. And uh, thanks.